complexity. There is a lot of complexity around the revenue cycle. And in, in today's age, the thing that really is constant, as we all know, really is change that's going on. Health, and in the healthcare revenue cycle space, you have organizations that are merging or acquiring other professional doc organizations or might be opening up new catheter labs. So there's a lot of change going on within, within uh, healthcare and in, especially in revenue cycle today. One thing that makes predictive analytics so applicable in this world today is because if we collect the right data and pull the right data together at the right time, we are pulling together all the information that naturally is coming from the result of this change. And if we can model that and find those correlations and trends across uh, different places where care is given and how those impact the codes and things that get onto a claim, we can really find some interesting information and find pockets where of, of lost revenue out there. So, one thing that makes predictive analytics so applicable today is we have a lot of change going on in healthcare, um, even from a regulatory standpoint, from a business standpoint. And by building systems that can learn from the data over time, you're naturally able to adjust and optimize to those changes rather than looking in the rearview mirror and trying to, of course, correct after the fact. The adoption rate of predictive modeling in healthcare finance uh, is increasing. We see this. Uh, we see this happening around the country, where um, organizations are realizing that that they are changing, as I had mentioned, and they're realizing that they're able to collect data around that and make more data-driven decisions in healthcare. Um, this has been very common in a lot of other industries, such as finance um, and technology. But we now have the data and we have the, the technologies around that data to, to identify those patterns and trends and, and adjust to this change over time. So if I'm working in a system in the Pacific Northwest that is being acquired, well, I can naturally adjust to that and take into account how my, how my de patient demographics might change, how my demographics of my doctors may change over time. So even when we have changes going on within healthcare systems, predictive modeling is very applicable because it can help model those changes. But from the, some of the changes occurring um, in regard to the interface between a provider and a patient on the financial aspect like self-pay, it's another great uh, area where predictive analytics can help uh, can help a provider deal with their self-pay population um, in, in in a more mindful way. So to get to give an example, uh, I spoke at Hims a few years ago with with Richard Nagengas from Northwestern Memorial, and Richard gave a great uh, great example of some of the efforts that Northwestern does to. Uh, address patient experience when they're in the hospital for care, understanding what's being done to you, what will be done to you next, speaking in to you in your native language, those types of things. But after the person is discharged and goes home, Richard was saying, if they don't, we, we mail the bill, and if they don't pay it, we turn it over to collections. We do nothing around patient experience when it comes to that financial relationship with the patient. And because in, in America today, there's more patient responsibility on the shoulders of the patients. This is another technology that allows uh, uh, providers to be more mindful in how they deal with self-pay people. So if, I'm, if, if I make a prediction that a patient is likely to pay and they just haven't paid yet, Northwestern will wait and wait till that money comes in rather than, rather than turn that patient over to collection. So there's a, an example of how you can make a tangible business decision based upon the data analytics coming out of your system to even increase the patient satisfaction of uh, uh, the, the folks you're serving. And I see the industry changing as a result of uh, predictive analytics becoming more data-driven and making more data-driven decisions in general. And we see this uh, a common problem, we see this in is in, in uh, charge leakage, where a system may be leaking one to two percent of their revenue based upon not, not billing for correct codes. Predictive analytics is an excellent, excellent technology to apply to that problem, to catch those cases where money is being left on the table. So there's a case too where this technology is, is analyzing historic data and finding trends around coding, coding and reimbursement and then using those where anomaly, where, where we find anomalies, where we find a claim that is missing a code on it, where uh, a, a pacemaker may have very likely been given in a cardiac uh, encounter but was not coded on at the claim. So by doing this in an automated way, we're able to capture this revenue, bring it back to a provider without really an additional any additional staff or, uh, or manual work on their part. Um, so that, that's an example of how this technology really is starting to change the landscape, not, over, not only in revenue cycle, but when you start looking at clinical care patterns and tying them to reimbursement, you can start then looking at cost, comparative effectiveness, and also just increasing the, uh, the general charge integrity uh, that, a, that a provider might have, which as things shift from uh, fee-for-service into, uh, into fee-for-value, Coding and baselines play a huge role in that, and this is an automated system to, uh, to really improve those results. 
Healthcare finance leaders, when, when looking at a predictive modeling solution, I really recommend to look for the ROI. Look for the benefit that it's going to bring to your organization. If, if it's a monetary benefit, that, that is great. It's very easy to measure monetary benefit, but also take into account kind of the other benefits. I mentioned um, from a charge integrity perspective, just having an automated system, predictive modeling based to ensure that coding is done correctly does provide a benefit to, to an organization in addition to a monetary benefit. So concentrating on the, the, the return that the predictive modeling technology will bring to you and the cost that it might, it might incur on you to adopt that solution. Um, we've designed solutions to be very much um, anomaly based or exception based. So when we see a, a revenue cycle event that is unusual, we're going to focus someone's head on it to help work out why was that unusual and do the root cause to it. So there's a, by focusing that, we minimize the amount of time someone has to work on it. But other solutions, you know, if, if they're giving you a list that might have a large number of false positives, that's more, that's more cost on your end to make it effective for your, for your organization. So really focusing on what you will get out of a solution um, in compared to the benefit that, that it provides you is, is definitely key in this area.